Why must I keep reviewing this shitty band? What were they thinking? They have their own dedicated YouTube channel that nobody subscribes to. All the comments are turned off. Yeah, the comments are disabled. What a shitload of bugs! All right, let's get this over with. I want the ad revenue, and uh, to all my subscribers, I, I am your whore. I will dance when you tell me to dance, and I guess I just have to learn to get used to it. Also, I'm still sick, so this is going to be extra fun. Rex Viper did another live show at the 2023 Portland Retro Game Expo, and it was around Halloween, I guess, so they wore masks and shit. You know James had a huge throbbing erection for this idea. This was all him. So yeah, let's review Rex Viper's most recent live performance. This is Dancing with Ghosts. Well, first of all, it seems like maybe they saw one of my videos at least and finally upgraded their amps to something that's not completely embarrassing to put on stage. They make the right choice to keep Justin Silverman off stage and he merely announces a band much like he did for the last show. Portland Retro Game Park! Just doing that perfunctory Rex Viper chant, which in my mind, I feel like people shouldn't be coerced into doing. If they're that stoked to see a band, they should just be doing that on their own. But these nerds don't actually like Rex Viper's music. It's just merely another spectacle at a gaming convention. The first thing I notice about this stage setup is the complete lack of lighting. I'm not going to lie. This lighting looks like shit. They have these like floodlights lighting the stage. Are they searching for victims of a natural disaster or are they putting on a rock show? It's hard to tell. And what's even more telling about that is that their lights were quite dialed in on their last performance, which tells me they have no manager. They have nobody representing the band. There's no lighting director or band go-between that can go and ensure quality control. Now, this would be no surprise at all if Rex Viper was just a local band playing uh, a local show, but they don't bill themselves that way, and people have paid money to be able to see them. This is what separates Rex Viper from your run-of-the-mill local band. All the foibles of Rex Viper are completely acceptable if they were some band you just saw at your local bar, but the fact that they are billed as this premium show just to get pitchy vocals, flood lighting, and bad musicianship is where the whole e-celeb privilege really chaps my ass. When I watched Rex Viper's recent performance, I noticed many of the same ills of all the other live performances that they have done. The lead singer is pitchy because he's trying to pull notes out of his ass that are simply out of his fucking range. <laughs> And the singer already has the, the bloated look of some cynical, burned-out rock star who has played way too many shows, man, and is fed up with this whole embarrassing shtick that they're doing. Yet they've played like five shows total. I mean, maybe five. This one might have made five. Could have been only four. The audio performance on this. How have they not figured this out? How have they played this many, well, not that many shows, but enough shows to where they should be able to figure out how to get a good audio mix. This audio sounds like complete shit. It sounds like it was recorded on a fan's cell phone, like, standing like 20 yards away. Like, I know they aren't the best musicians by a long shot, but they could at least get a clean sounding recording. They just can't seem to figure it out. And even the video, sometimes it looks great. Sometimes it looks straight off an iPhone. Which is fine if you're uploading this video as a fan, but this is a product that they upload to their Rex Viper YouTube page as an official concert video. Speaking of video, there's no video screens on this show either. Like, the last show there wasn't video screens, but at least on the last show they had interesting lighting that kind of 
bathe the band in darkness, which again is how you'd want to see a group of dads. But not on this one, baby. They are they are just a, a prison spotlight on those motherfuckers and no video. So they have to superimpose the video in post-production uh, because, you know, they put all that hard work into those, what, they they got to be like four-year-old video screens at this point. Same graphics, same everything. They're not letting those babies go to waste, so... There's uh there's superimpose it over the uh, band, so you just kind of have to rely on the band's complete lack of uh, charisma to entertain you visually, which is a shame. I'm just having fun. Leave them alone. No, people paid money to see this. The minute somebody pays money for a ticket, you're no longer having fun. You're putting on a performance to entertain a paying audience. So save me that dipshit clap back in the comment section. Which, yes, technically I realize you can still have fun and be professional on stage, absolutely, 100%. But your priority as a professional musician should be to play accurately first and have fun second. The lead guitar player. Man, I'm so fucking sick of talking about this guy. I think everyone else is sick of his ass, as inconsistent as he is as well. So I think to remedy this, they just turn him the fuck down the whole show. Then he really pulls out the showmanship at some point, and he starts playing his guitar behind his back. Behind the past, and he's after your soul, he's back. The man. Now, call me crazy, but before you start playing your guitar behind your back, you need to probably should learn how to play it correctly in front of your of your back. So because it was so close to Halloween and there was no video screens that they could rely on, I guess uh, they decided to throw on these dollar store Jason masks um, like halfway into the set, which looked like the cheapest possible mask you could have found. Not to mention earlier in the show, James Rolfe is wearing a dollar store Hollywood Undead facial covering, which is really sad because the band Hollywood Undead already sucked enough on their own. Anyways, with the Jason mask on and without the safety of James's ratty Mortal Kombat hat, we're finally able to see James full transition into being a bald man. And look, I don't care if somebody loses their hair. That's fine. I love Moby. But at least acknowledge that shit in your nerd videos like Doug Walker did when he finally went fully bald. It's just weird at this point is all I'm saying. The audience to me just looks bored for most of this show. Whoever edited this video had no experience editing concert footage. If the audience is just standing there, like, watching, maybe don't include that in the edit because from what I saw, they just kind of looked bored and were watching this because it was the Angry Video Game Nerds band, not because they are actual fans of the music. But wait. <laughs> Hold the fucking phone. Later in the performance, like, two people attempted to start moshing. <laughs> Dude, no. No. You do not mosh to this music ever. This is wrong. And I don't blame you because you probably didn't know any better. You were probably just copying something you saw online. But there's an unspoken rule at any show. Don't mosh to Rex Viper. So after what I had seen thus far, I honestly skipped a couple of songs in this performance because A, I really didn't need to hear their shitty mashups again for the 15th time, and B, I knew it was going to be the same fuck-ups that plagued all their other shows because they don't care about becoming a, an actual band. It's all for fun. Which I will reiterate until I die. Have fun in your fucking garage. Don't make people pay money to see this shit. So yeah, I skipped the last two or three songs to get to the last song, which is a cover of the Beastie Boys song, Fight for Your Right. And yeah, it's a fine bar band level cover of the song. The singer's voice is well blown out at this point, and hearing the song with only one guy trying to rap really makes you miss the three-part back and forth between the original Beastie Boys, rest in peace, MCA. 
Then the show ends with this complete train wreck of a drum fuck up, which is odd considering the drummer is easily the most talented member of the group. But hey, that's ass wiper for you. Um, so yeah, it's all the same old shit, but I knew you guys were starving for my take on this latest performance, so here you go. And I also greatly appreciate that some of you stick around and watch my other content as well. I know I struck some kind of a nerve by covering James Rolfe's band, and I'm thankful that those of you who have subscribed sometimes check out my other stuff too. And I hope I my sick ass, <coughs> gravelly weird voice did not turn you off. If, in fact, I hope it turned you on. Anyway, till it's getting weird now. Until next time, enjoy the rest of your night. Whatever.